everyone. It's, it's great to be here. Great to see such a, such a room full of people. And second time hosting here in London and second time hosting a panel on regulation and innovation. Mm. So I'm, I'm really excited. And we've made a lot of progress since I hosted the last panel. And I see Sarah here. <laughs> we've worked a lot together. Uh, and I have a very distinguished panelist, <laughs> should I say collection today, curation. And thank you all for being here. And they're so distinguished that I need to read their accomplishments off, so excuse me for reading. Uh, but these women are very accomplished, each in their own right. So Francesca Hopwood Road is, the, is leading the BIS Innovation Hub London Center since February of this year. She previously headed up the FCA's RegTech and SoupTech program of work. And in this role, she created a culture enabling the identification and exploration of cutting edge data science techniques and their application to financial services regulation, including the world's first digital sandbox and suite of SoupTech tools. Anna Wallace is senior program officer of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Her role is to leverage technology to enable financial regulators in managing the risk posed by emerging financial services models without impeding innovation required to drive financial inclusion. Anna has 20 plus years of experience in public policy <laughs> with expertise. We all have 20 plus years. <laughs> we all have 20 plus plus years. Uh, with expertise in financial regulation, digital financial services, and consumer protection. In her most recent senior leadership role, Anna mm. built the innovation department at the UK's Financial Conduct Authority. And mm. Jennifer Lassiter, executive director of the Digital Dollar Project. In addition to her current role as ED of D DDP, Jennifer serves on the World Economic Forum's Global Blockchain Business Council as a member of the Progressive Council Institute's Mosaic Economic Project. Prior to DDP, Jennifer was a founding member of Innovation Tech Lab at the federal FDIC and held positions in offices of technology and innovation at the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, the CFPB. So, very diverse perspectives. Very diverse perspectives, a lot of experience. <laughs> Uh, many years, and uh, I'm hoping that this, this, is gonna be, this is gonna be a fun discussion. Yeah. yeah. So, first of all, let's focus on open source. Um, can you each share with the audience your organization's engagement in open source and the experience with it? What, do you, what have you leveraged so far uh, to help your organization's mission, and what do you see going forward from an open source perspective? Mm -hmm. Who's going first? I know, that's a great question. <laughs> I'm happy to start, I'm happy to start. Hi everyone, Jen Lassiter, Digital Dollar Project. We are a nonprofit based out of the United States focused on furthering discussion around a US central bank digital currency. And we believe, um, and we do that through experimentation and um, education and policy work. Um, we believe that the infrastructure that underpins um, the digital dollar serves a very critical uh, public good. And the modernization of that infrastructure then further ensures longevity of the US dollar um, and creates prosperity for future generations. So one would imagine that if we believe the infrastructure that we move money on in whatever form that money takes serves a public good, that adopting an open source ethos would be the best path forward towards exploring and building that future ecosystem. So how do we use open source? I am so excited to be here, um, to be talking to you all, um, and to share an announcement that we made in June, which is a partnership with the Digital Dollar Project and the Linux Foundation, Phenos and Hyperledger specifically, to really bring, both collate the existing open source central bank digital currency projects today and highlight them, um, but then really truly bring the weight of the open source community and open source tools to bear on that experimentation and really accelerate the conversation in a very democratized manner. And if you are interested, um, I think when 
let's see, Gab was talking earlier, I can't find him in the audience, but he had mentioned, right, we don't build the projects for you, we build them with you. We are in the projects, we are in the process of defining those objectives for that initiative right now. And you can go to any of our websites, though I will encourage you to go to digitaldollarproject.org and mm -hmm. sign up to participate in the initiative and be part of building how we're going to achieve um, that outcome. Who's next? I'll go next. So I, we'll, we'll have a logical. Um, so I work at the Gates Foundation, um, and, and obviously what you know about the Gates Foundation technology is at the centre of what we do in terms of our mission. We are fighting health inequality, disease, um, but also financial inequality. Um, I moved from the UK Financial Conduct Authority um, as a regulator who had really in the last five years try to drive innovation in the interest of consumers, right? The regulator had, and I'd, I'd been part of, of the regulator for a lot longer than that, where really we tried to stamp out bad behavior. And what we were trying to do through driving innovation was try to kind of come up with good solutions and be part of that, be part of the solution, right? Get us out of our comfort zone to help that. And, and I think with the Gates Foundation, what they are trying to do is really ensure that those benefits are felt by those who are most vulnerable, um, who are poorest, and who generally um, always lag in terms of getting the benefits. And I think in terms of benefits of technology as well, that lag is very pronounced. Um, so that, that is what our mission is. Uh, at the moment, we are, have a, a goal for 2030 to get 80% of the world's population included in formal financial systems. We believe that being included in a formal financial system it does help with poverty alleviation. So we are on the side of financial services, um, but it's got to be done in the right way, right? Um, in, in terms of, and, and that's why I've been uh, brought on board. Um, we are doing really well in terms of that mission, and that's not just down to the Gates Foundation. Obviously, it's down to the efforts of governments, regulators, um, and other uh, donor countries as well. But in terms of um, the, the journey that we've been on, we have been looking at driving financial inclusion and that's involved real-time payment systems, it's involved digital ID, um, and open source has been a central component of our strategy at the um, financial services for the poor team. I've now been brought on as a regulator to help them think about, okay, we've built that financial inclusion, how do we keep it? How, how are we resilient? How do we maintain trust in those financial services? Because it's pretty fragile, right? And we've seen that with the quality um, over, over COVID. So for me, thinking about how we can help regulators exploit technology, use technology, and catalyze the advancements in technology into these emerging economies is a critical part of my strategy. We're in the early days of that um, strategy development. We've got some really exciting partners, and uh, AIR, who, who are partners with Finos, um, are, are a partner for the Gates Foundation. So for me, Hopefully today I'm here to talk about some of the problems and some of the opportunities and really kind of excite and engage this community. Thanks. I, I just want to stay and listen, frankly, to, to Anna and Jen. Um, but um, so I'm Francesca. I head up the Bank for International Settlements Innovation Hub London Centre, one of seven centres um, across the world. Um, and our remit is to develop uh, technological public goods across um, six domains. So CBDCs, of course, uh, next-gen uh, FMIs, regtech, subtech, um, cybersecurity, green finance, um, and open finance. We've had a little bit about um, some of that earlier this morning. Um, and our, our remit is to work in partnership, to collaborate. Um, across the central banking community, across the public, uh, the private sector, the public sector writ large, to really identify emerging, to emerging critical trends as they pertain to the central banking world, and then think about how we can start to develop proof of concepts, prototypes that start to enable um, and, and formulate sort of what good could look like in, ut in utilising those trends and then deploying them for the central banking community. And I think what is what is what we've heard so far, and I think what is a, a really interesting piece that I think is, sits at the heart of open source, is actually that knowledge share, that collaboration, that validation, that building, that enhancing 
And I think what, what is so critical for us at the Bank for International Settlements is thinking about how do, we, how do we bring together that community? How do we enhance and leverage that community so that we can build on, we can in, uh, enable the kind of technology that we're, prototypes that we are building for, for, the, for the benefit of many. The central banking community is large. Um, there are various uh, different issues, agendas. We've had a lot about talent and skills this morning, for example. So, so open source, the ability to harness that in the pursuit of what we're doing is absolutely critical. And one of the things at BIS Innovation Hub that we've done in the last couple of years is start to develop BIS Open Tech, which is a kind of a first nascent step. And I think that's a really important part of the conversation today, which is about where different people are at in this space, where different actors are at, to start to show the benefits of this kind of fora for really enhancing and enabling activity across this space. That's, that leads right into my next question. <laughs> so you guys um, have spent some time at the FCA and you've done some really fantastic groundbreaking work there. What about the regulators? So um, I, I, I always feel like you know, we, uh, we are sort of the bridge, open source is the bridge between the participants in the financial system and those who, as Jim said, they're coming and they, they would like to make sure that the financial system operates quite well. How do you see the regulators engaging? What's needed? What's, what are the next steps? How can we bring them to that, tape, to that round table that we're trying to create? I mean, I can start. I mean, I think it's about recognizing where they're at. <laughs> Um, and I know that sounds a really obvious thing to say, but I think it's really important. You know, when I was at the Financial Conduct Authority, you know, one of the things that we knew absolutely was about uh, really engaging um, with the wider community, understanding what was what was new, what was evolving, where where the where the insight and capability was developing. What could we learn from that? How do we build those bridges and those nodes, if you like, to bring that insight in to learn and leverage off it? But in the context, clearly, that you know, we we were we we were I was and I now am part of the central banking community, and with that comes a very different set of responsibilities and reflections and frameworks. And I think that one of the things I would I sort of maybe for the audience to reflect on is, you know, open source is. Uh, is, is, is going to mean different things to different communities. There's going to be different responses, different um, appetites for it. And so I think there's an edu educative piece, but there's also thinking about the domains to start to play in. Some are going to be more receptive um, to, to kind of the, the benefits of open source. Um, others may be sort of, you know, little, not quite ready to go there yet. Um, but when I was at the, sorry, when I was at the FCA, I mean, the relationships with Jen in her previous role at CFPB, understanding what the CF CFPB had done around open source, understanding from them what had worked well. I think our previous speaker spoke really eloquently about what had not worked so well. The importance of understanding the missteps or the paths that were a little rockier. What was that about? What can we learn from that? How do we really want to build that in? I think that openness and transparency amongst the regulatory community is really key. Um, but also thinking about kind of the steps that one needs to take to go to move along that path to kind of understanding and then thinking about the application of open source in that context. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you we, want to talk about your like, specific we can experience? to the US and then come back to the UK. <laughs> Bless. Um, I could not agree more. And actually, mm. so I, I'll say a, a couple things about understanding, at least in terms of US financial regulators, where they're at. Um, find your people, right? So find the people within the agencies that are looking to create an open space for this type of experimentation and to establish connections vis-a-vis uh, -vis private public partnership, right? So if you go in the US um, to the CFPB website, um, uh, and, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on it after 10 years. <laughs> if you Google it, right, it'll take you right there. Um, so um, you can go onto the website and all of their open source projects are listed as well as direct links to their GitHub re repositories. And I would encourage you to start to engage on a project-based level. Um, and then through those efforts, you will be invited into wider open source conversations with the Bureau specifically. 
If you go to the United States Digital Service website, usds.gov, I do know that one, um, they have an entire um, uh, uh, centers of excellence centered around open source activities across the entirety of the US federal government. There are many ways for you to engage in that space. Um, and again, it's, it's getting your foot in the door and then being able to understand that these agencies are resource strapped. And so I will always push back on the, uh, you know, government is stodgy and, and government is not in touch. They have technologists that have worked there for 40 years and they can't understand. Some of that is true. Mm -hmm. A lot of that is not true. And it's a matter of being able to capitalize on your skill set and bring the weight of your skill set into this public minded space and to teach them and they want to learn from you. Um, so my second encouragement will be once you've established those relationships, don't be afraid to offer to do a demo or to offer to do a talk to that team or that agency's team. Um, I was at CFPB, I went to FDIC. At FDIC, I did several convenings across all financial regulators where we brought in um, expert speakers to talk and open source was one of the topics. So um, please raise your hand. It is very welcome and it is, it is very valuable um, in the context. I will also say in terms of digital currency in the US, what is very encouraging is um, this really whole of government approach that we're seeing um, come to bear, right? It started with the Federal Reserve Board releasing their um, discussion paper for public comment. I hope many of you or, or the entities that employ you did comment. Um, those are important steps to really showing diversity and perspective about what the Federal Reserve is considering. We saw the White House release an executive order calling for um, private public partnership around building a digital currency ecosystem under understanding the existing payment system with the lens of national security in particular and security, which we know the open source community can lean heavily into. Um, and then we've seen several public comment requests come out um, from Commerce, um, which was talking about competitiveness, right? Again, open source 101. Um, we saw Treasury send a framework to the White House last week that was um, further emphasizing the need for global cooperation, right? This is interoperability between the infrastructure that I talked about in my opening statement and how we're building it um, and how we're building it in an open transparent and safe way right these are the principles of open source it's probably some of the initial um, talk, talking points that brought you into mm -hmm. the ecosystem so there are several opportunities for you to engage um, particularly around finance and if you really want to get wonky you can go to project Hamilton's github repo right um, um, their CBDC code is very academic based. I will just put that up out front. It's hard um, to, to dive in from a developer perspective, but there, it is an entryway and it is a path and they are looking for public engagement. Um, so lots of opportunity mm -hmm. to, to engage. And again, this, this further enhancement of having a use case that helps with the cultural shift that says open source is not immediately a bad thing. It does not immediately open us to risk as regulators. It is not unscalable. It is not, not secure, right? We can use these as use cases to teach the government and then to help them build what this future infrastructure looks like. Back to the UK. I'm not going to do the UK, but <laughs> <laughs> um, they've got enough people helping them in the UK. They don't, they don't need me anymore. I mean, I think from my perspective, if you think about people and connections and culture, I mean, Jen and Francesca are two very important people for you. If you want to work in financial services, you want to work in open source, right? They're going to open doors for you. So that's one point I think I should just, you've talked about other people, but I, I think you two are, are really pioneers um, and, and they have... You know, with Jen at the moment, you know, she has the broad experience and is specifically looking at CBDCs, which might not be kind of, you know, my strategy and my priority, but it's where a lot of intellectual property and, you know, some of the best minds and thinkers are, are, are focused on those problems. So if that's the place where we've got to craft out the model of engagement and what works best, like that, that's good for me, right? Because then, then we can just pick that up quickly and start to use that kind of model engagement for regulators on issues that, that I care about, that I think are important for the poor and their lived experiences. 
um, Francesca the same, right? If we can solve um, the model of engagement for regulators with open source at Francesca's level, then you know that has huge influence over regulators, right? They're the they're the central bank of central banks, right? So that's you know it's a it's a difficult um, it's a kind of more complex strategy to follow, but but thank goodness Francesca's got the experience and and also was willing to, you know, and has that mandate to do the experimentation and the POC model, right, that a lot of central bankers don't have. I mean, the, the, the world I care about, which is those that have newly been included in financial um, services and the regulators that are responsible for that, right, we, we spoke about financial inclusion. So we've had a 50% increase in access to financial services in the last decade. And most of that has been felt in emerging economies. So, you know, I'm an ex-regulator. Put yourself in the shoes of that regulator. They've just had this huge explosion of um, new users in their system, right? I'm a risk manager, so this is, <laughs> this is not the best news for me. Um, I'm trying to keep on top of it. Um, I am not digitally savvy. Um, and I, and I, I, I may have some teams that are digitally savvy, but they're not necessarily looking at the things I care about, consumer protection, right? They're more doing the, the modeling um, and, the, and the kind of monetary supply side of things and the interest rate. Um, they're not doing kind of market conduct supervision, things like fraud management or whatever. Um, and a lot of the players that are driving this financial inclusion are new to me, right? I don't know them, they're not banks. They're mobile money operators. Um, so it's, 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 I see this as an opportunity, thank goodness. Um, and the good news is the pandemic has also led most regulators to see that they have got to be, become more digitally savvy. So there is a huge opportunity there, but there isn't the Francescas and the, and the Gens working in these fields yet. So for me, the call is, um, and there, but there also isn't a huge amount of regulation, right? So. I know a lot of the reg tech work that, that Jane's leading, which I think is essential and critical, um, is about trying to digitize very complex systems, um, which were never designed to be digitized in the first place. Actually, what you have in a lot of these emerging economies is not complex systems. There's not a huge amount of reporting. There's a, like a complete lack of digital interaction between the providers and the regulators. So we could look at outcomes and think of risks and actually design these processes with with your mindset at the heart of it so i i feel like there's a huge opportunity but we don't have the 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 institutions the organizations the connective tissue there to help us india is probably um a, an example where there has been a huge amount of development and we've got um, our open source uh, digital identity community there. But I would love to, for us to fix on some of the problems that the world's poorest are really concerned about, which is being defrauded through the use of their mobile phone, being ripped off and costing charges because they're, um, they're not literate, um, not being able to really exercise complaints in the way that we all expect with financial services, so not able to hold the financial system mm -hmm. to account. I know there are incredible solutions mm -hmm. Um, and there's a lot of um, assets already out there in the open source community that my partners have been using. So for me, there, there is a kind of, it, it, you know, you've been talking about the culture and the, and the places and the ways to engage. I'm looking more to create that connective tissue and to inspire so through some use cases. But obviously it's for organizations, I think like Finos and yourself, to, to, to also give us feedback of like, okay, so what do these channels need to look like and how can we create those systems and structures? And the Gates Foundation would love to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. That's that's it's very interesting. It's it's interesting to see that you know on the one hand within the established financial system we have lots of rules that have not been digitized, and a lot of the work that we're doing is trying to create the digital version of the existing mm -hmm. rules. On the other hand, what you're talking about is there's lots of markets where the rules have not yet been established. So maybe that's even riper ground yeah. for digitization in mm -hmm. the sense that you can experiment and you're, you don't have to break anything or prove to anyone that something is indeed yeah. working because there's nothing there. So it's, mm -hmm. it's great ground to 
to start with. And, and maybe that's, that's one way to bring these things together. Any, anything else that's on your sort of wish list of how can I, a part, either a fintech or, or, or a technical services company or a financial institution engage, say through us, you know, one of the things we have is the, our Reg Innovation SIG where we discuss ideas and problems that people want to collaborate on. So any wish list kind of suggestions for, for us to chew on later? Hmm. Um, I suppose it's to pick up on, on the point that Jen, Jen made, which is I engage with, with us. And I know sometimes it's hard, and I know sometimes we seem impenetrable and all these different things, but you know, there, are, there are spaces, and actually you know, we need your feedback on whether those, how those spaces are working and, mm -hmm. and how are they facilitating the right kind of conversations with the, with the right groups of people. And I think that's, that's really key. You know, at the BIS, we have, I said, our open tech platform. We have our innovation summits. But you know, we, there's, there's lots of other, kind of, as we've talked about, connected tissues, ways that we need to surface that conversation, ways we need to share insight into kind of, you know, so that, so that open source can be a fuel, a way of democratizing and enabling knowledge transfer, which I think to all the points that Anna's made so eloquently, that is absolutely key in terms of thinking about how the role that open source and the value it can bring. So I think it's about sometimes also saying, actually, we've got this insight to share. These are the, 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 we'd like to share it with you. We'd like to create these spaces for conversation. I think um, you know, that kind of dialogue and, and, and engagement, I think, for us is really critical. Mm -hmm. I'll be calling you to join the SIG. <laughs> do, do. And your team. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think from from the Gates perspective, I think some, I mean, I've already called out some of the feedback, you know, thinking about how we get you involved in this consumer protection ecosystem. We have some blueprints from the Gates Foundation of doing that with the creation of um, open source um, real-time payment systems, doing it with um, digital ID. Regulation for me has a slightly different nuance, right? You're dealing with regulators, and and there there is there is good and bad. Like regulators give us trust, right? In something where we you know, we give our money to a system and trust that we will get it back at some point. Regulators are a critical aspect of that, um, but but they bring certain challenges and and thinking about modes. And we do have a lot of innovation offices now that could be landing slots, but I think getting feedback from you on on what's worked best and what hasn't, and that can be from other projects, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think thinking about the kinds of assets that you need to thrive as well, because um, we're, we're all kind of in the digital public goods space. So if mm -hmm. there's research, evidence, you know, we've spoken about collaboration, but are there other digital public goods that help this community mm -hmm. thrive? Mm -hmm. um, you know, transparency is a, is a slight problem in some of our markets, but a, but a, but a philanthropic entity like ours can, can work with partners to try and help. Um, the proliferation of data, whatever it is that, that, that you guys need to, um, to thrive. So that would be another um, aspect that I'd be um, really interested to get feedback. We do have some partners as well, um, and I think AIR through Finos are a really good partner. The Cambridge for Cent Centre for Alternative Finance um, are now working with the open source community, so reaching um, out to there and innovations and poverty action are a third party here. You know, all three of them, when I said I'm coming here to talk to you guys, they were like, oh my God, right, okay, I mean, I got documents, <laughs> I got, like, like there's a whole, <laughs> there's a whole set of links that they want me to, to share with you. So they're three partners that are really excited and trying to figure out a way to do it. Um, so please reach out to them. Thanks. I'll again put a plug for Open Digital Currency Initiative. Uh, please sign up even if you want to lurk in the shadows for a while, that's acceptable and, and, and see the movement or if you want to dive right in and help shape it. Um, Digital Dollar Project, um, again, we have that experimentation side and policy side and they feed each other as they should, right? It should be a symbiotic relationship easier said than done, as Anna and I were talking about earlier today. Um, through our experimentation, we work with the private sector. We're here to establish that private-public partnership um, with the US government and the decision makers, the Federal Reserve Board, around a US digital dollar. 
you are the experimentation. So if you are interested in participating in a pilot, I promise you they are managed quite tightly. Um, small in scope, quick MVP. We are typically looking to experiment and turn around analysis and open data in a three to four month window. Um, I would invite you to reach out to me. I'm happy to let you know if your institution is already a participant with DDP um, and how we can get you involved and engaged if you're not, get you into that, um, that experience of touching these new emerging technologies so you can both learn about the impact in this future system to your strategy and operations while also teaching and showing the value of open source technologies in this space. And, I'm trying to think any other calls to action. I know this is fun. Jane, can we send you a list oh, of absolutely. links? Yeah. And we have a breakout as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and do come to the Reg Innovation SIG yes. where you can share it with everyone. Uh, I, we're we, wo woefully it's been out of time. For a while. <laughs> <laughs> but this is really exciting. We do have another breakout session later this afternoon if you want to come. We, we want to share more stories from the trenches, yes. more do's and don'ts, advice, a little bit of, you know, we have a, a, a reg tech uh, joining us. Regnosis will be at the table as well. So different stories and Q&A. So I know we didn't have time right now, but please join us for our breakout session later this afternoon and, and we'll continue the conversation. And it's it's if for for a topic as potentially boring as regulation, this is really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all for listening. And thank we'll you. See you later today. Thank you.